So what do we need to do? We need to run the routing and remote access server console and get it configured and up and running. I'll click on start, come up to my administrative tools, and then down to routing and remote access. When I launch routing and remote access the first time, what it will show me is my server with a down arrow because it has not been configured yet. If I right click on my server, I have the choice to configure and enable routing and remote access. Microsoft provides a little wizard that gets most of this set up and ready for you automatically. I'm going to click on Next. It asks me what type of service I would like to set up here. What am I trying to do with this particular computer? Is this going to be a remote access or a NAT box? In this particular case, it's simply going to be doing routing. LAN routing is not a choice here, so I need to select Custom Configuration, choose Next. I'm going to be doing LAN routing, and then choose Next. And that's it. Select Finish. It'll go through, configure all of the items necessary for you, and it will start the service up so it's ready to go. Yes, I want the service to be started. And now I've got the green arrow on my server showing that everything's up and running. If I open this up, I see my network interfaces, where by default it has detected my backbone and my marketing connection. Both of them are in here ready to go. And then if I come down under IP routing, I have my general container. And if I right click on general, this is where I can install a new routing protocol if necessary. What are my choices here for routing? Of course, I could always set up static routing. If I have a really small environment, that might be the way to go. But RIP is great for a small environment, small to medium. If you start to get into a large enterprise class environment, of course, that's where you're going to want to look at OSPF, or Open Shortest Path, first.